Good evening, my brothers and sisters. We are so grateful to the Lord for giving us again this wonderful opportunity that we can be together, though we are, you know, in our own part, uh, respective homes, to feel the presence of God and to study His Word again. But before anything else, let's begin in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much, O oh God, for this time that we can be together again in the study of your words. We know, God, that you are among your people, O oh God, and you are there as a faithful and gracious God. So tonight, I pray for your blessing, your anointing be upon each one of us, that we may receive, Lord, tonight the spirit of understanding, the spirit of wisdom, and the spirit of revelation as we study your word tonight, O oh God. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So for tonight's study, we will handle this topic about where can we find hope? And uh, our scripture passage is taken from the book of Job, chapter 11, verses 18 to 19. And I'll be using the New Living Translation for tonight. And let me read. <clears throat> Having hope will give you courage. You will be protected and will rest in safety. You will lie down unafraid, and many will look up to you for help. Now, during this global pandemic, preachers cannot help but speak about hope. You know, I personally believe that the church has this responsibility and mandate from the Lord to instill hope in His people at times like this. What is going on around us that sometimes overwhelms us? Our hope is overshadowed by this dreadful reality. But the book of Job says, having hope will give you courage. Now in the Old Testament times when God's people are facing a hardship brought about by their enemies, judgment from God or from calamities, God would send his prophet to give his people a message of hope by giving promises of deliverance and restoration. So likewise today, God wants us to have hope in Him. You know what? Hope is needed during times of hardship like this unforeseen turn of event that has affected the entire world. The coronavirus caught the world barefooted. The world is not ready for its attack. Now, According to survey, more than 200 nations are affected and joined together in the fight against the coronavirus, the uncommon, I mean the common microscopic enemy, killing people by the thousands and currently infected more than 3 million people worldwide. The world did not see this unseen enemy coming. While Powerful world leaders are busy with their own national agenda for world dominance, while America and China are focused on their trade war, while North Korea is busy with their nuclear power testing, while the Middle East are in constant fight and civil wars in Africa, while powerful nations are giving much of their national budget and developing advanced technology advanced military weapons, while Hollywood celebrities and other celebrities live their lives as if they have forever, while third world countries are focused on eradicating corruption, drugs, and human trafficking, while people are continually lovers of pleasures, and politicians are constantly bickering and trying to outsmart each other, and while America is focused on their coming presidential election, and Americans are looking forward for the, for the NFL season in January, and while our beloved country the Philippines is focused on its drug war and internal issues. And when public health was vulnerable, the coronavirus out of the blue suddenly attacked and unleashed its deadly power to infect and kill people. And just within three months, brought down the world in its knees. Unprepared, as seen in the lack of medical equipments, PPE, ventilators, hospital beds and rooms, no vaccine, even the least like face masks and 70% alcohol, which are the basic things to protect people from the virus, are not even available, if not hard to find. And as of today, government leaders, our DOH, World Health Organization, and pharmaceutical companies and laboratories are not giving us any ray of hope for the cure of COVID-19. Newscasters are not 
giving us good news, but the fearful reality of the spread and attack of this unseen enemy and the worldwide damage it left behind. And people are now restless and anxious because of the uncertainties of our time. Many felt there is no hope and the future is bleak. But my question while we're going through this pandemic is, if hope is the only thing that can keep us resilient, courageous, and optimistic, where then can we find hope when all around us seems hopeless? I personally believe that there is no hopelessness or hopeless situation. We might feel hopeless when we are in the dead end of our situation, but it's only the result of our pessimistic personal assessment of our situation. But in reality, if we put our faith in God, the little thing we have left can be God's blessing for us to move on for the next season of life and then prosper. We have a saying, Hamang may buhay, may pag-asa, right? And that sounds encouraging. But better yet, as long as we have faith in God, we have hope. Now back to my question, where to find hope in times like this? Of course, the answer is obvious. We find hope in God. And all of us agree that in God, we can truly find hope. But yet, Based from our observation and experience, we cannot deny the fact that in the present situation, many Christians all over the world, their hope is not strong enough as an anchor to hold them during the stormy times. The waves of fear and the strong current of economic uncertainties and the strong wind that's blowing away their hope are seemingly the one that's taking the upper hand and hitting us hard. Why is our hope in God not strong enough? It is because we lack the knowledge of the truth of why we base our hope in God or we lack depth of insight that supports our hope in God. The foundation of our hope in God is not deep enough and usually emotionally motivated, feeling based, so to speak. Now, it is easy for us to say we put our hope in God but for lack of knowledge of the truth and lack of depth of insight, our hope is weakened in times when we need it the most. It's like you're hoping the car you're driving will bring you to your destination, but you lack the knowledge that your car is not in good condition. So in the middle of your journey, while driving through rough roads, the car broke down. It failed in times when you need it the most. If you hope for the sake of hope, you might be disappointed. But the Bible says that those who put their hope in God will never be disappointed. The Word of God teaches us to grow in our knowledge of God. Paul encouraged the Philippian believers for them to abound more in knowledge and depth of insight. Paul also wrote in his letter to the Colossian believers to grow in the knowledge of God. Peter as well admonish believers to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowledge here is not only intended to broaden your intellectual capacity, but rather knowledge that become one's conviction, a belief that drives one's life, that no matter what, that person will hold on to that knowledge in spite of difficult times. Therefore, our growing knowledge of the truth and having depth of insight about God will fortify our hope and will serve as a lighthouse that will guide us as we navigate through the stormy weather of life. I pray that today's message will somehow enlighten you and increase your knowledge of the truth about the object of your faith. God is the main object of our hope. Therefore, as we abound more in knowledge and depth of insight, the stronger our hope is, the more optimistic we are in difficult times, knowing God deeper strengthens hope that will not disappoint us when the going gets rough. 
Now, if God indeed is the object of our faith, then it is very important for us to know Him better and better. The Holy Scripture tells us that God is a stronghold of our lives. And that is the truth, right? Now, a stronghold is a well-fortified place, a fortress, a bulwark, a garrison. A stronghold is a place of safety. And this is who God is to us. If stronghold made by man cannot be easily destroyed, then our God is a stronghold that cannot be demolished. So God, as our stronghold, we are safe and protected. And this knowledge keeps our hope in Him stronger. In Psalms chapter 9, verse 9 says, The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Again, we read in Psalms 18, verse 2, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the hoard of my salvation, my stronghold. Again, David said in Psalm 27 verse 1, The Lord is my light in my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Now, during this global pandemic, even though there seems to be nothing to be hopeful about, we can still find hope in God. And this hope will not disappoint us because He is our stronghold, a place of safety against our common enemy, the virus, the COVID-19. Also, the Bible reveals that God is a strong tower. Now, most mentions of towers in the Bible refer to a literal tower but they were also used figuratively as a symbol of protection and provision now the other purpose of a tower is like a citadel fortress hence a defense god is our tower meaning god is our defense a fortress our protection and our provision we read in psalm 61 verse 3 for you are my refuge, a high tower where my enemies can never reach me. If you make God your strong tower, then no virus can reach you. Proverbs 18 verse 10, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Therefore, our hope in God is strong. When the going is rough, because we know the truth that God is a strong tower, we can run to Him and we are safe. Yes, our safety against the coronavirus is to run to God, our strong tower, and He will protect us and provide all we need to win the battle against this unseen enemy. Also, we know that God is a promise keeper. Hallelujah, thank God. Our God is a promise keeper. Now, a promise can give us hope, right? In Proverbs eleven seven, hopes place in mortals die with them. All the promise of their power comes to nothing. But we don't put our hope in mortals. We don't rely on the promises of mortals. But we put our hope in the promises of God and not in mortals. As what David said, My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Because God is able to do what He has promised. You know, one thing God will not do is to take back what He promised. Because He who promised is faithful. In Psalms 145 verse 13, for your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. You rule throughout all generations. The Lord always keeps His promises. He is gracious in all He does. Psalms 119 verse 116. Lord, sustain me as you promised that I may live. Do not let my hope be crushed. Hallelujah. Yes. This is a promise that gives our hope that gives us hope through this global pandemic. God promised to sustain us so that we may live and He will not let our hope be crushed. 
Our hope is stronger in times of hardship because we know God is a promise keeper. Amen. Hallelujah. Give Him praise, church. It is also revealed in the Bible the attributes of God. And there are three main attributes of God that keeps our hope solid as rock. One, God is all-powerful. Hallelujah. God is all-powerful. Now, God is regarded as having supreme power. This means God can do what He wants. It means He is not subject to physical limitations like man is. Being omnipotent, God has power over wind, water, gravity, physics, etc. God's power is infinite or limitless. This means this coronavirus will not overcome us because God who is all-powerful is in control. Hallelujah, church. Give Him praise. Give Him glory. God is all-knowing. God is in all all god is all knowing in the sense that he is aware of the past present and future nothing takes him by surprise his knowledge is total he knows all that there is to know and all that can be known the world did not see this unseen virus is coming but God, who is all-knowing, who sees all things, is not taken by surprise. He knew and allowed it to happen for His own purpose and reason. And not only God is all-knowing and, 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 and all-powerful, but God is everywhere. Amen. God is ever. He is here with me right now. And He is also there with you right now. And this term means God is capable of being everywhere at the same time. It means His divine presence encompasses the whole of the universe. There is no location where He does not inhabit. He is everywhere at once. Therefore, with these attributes of God, those who put their hope in Him will never be disappointed or be embarrassed. So with this knowledge of who God is, let your hope give you the strength, courage, and optimism that will keep you steady as you go through this global pandemic. Allow this hope to be your light in this darkest moment. When the night is in its darkest, the star is in its brightest. Amen. Amidst the darkness of this global pandemic, experience the light of self realization a deep reflection on what really matters in life you know i believe god is using this global pandemic to be an eye opener and 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 and, and i hope you know that, that people of the world peoples of the world will realize the things that this world that they valued most is useless in times like this they may have money, but stores are closed. There's nothing to buy but food and basic commodities. They have expensive cars, but they cannot drive around. They have expensive clothes, but they are wearing right now our house clothes. I hope that people will come to realize that fame, power, and wealth is, you know, is not a guarantee or they are not a, are not a guarantee for survival. This coronavirus is no respected person regardless of his or her status in life. Now, all people in all walks of life are affected by this global pandemic. People's livelihood are affected. Businesses are closed. Millions of people worldwide lost their job. Hollywood and movie producers suspended producing movies. There is a lack of basic necessities and commodities in many parts of the world. Many people lost almost everything because of this COVID-19. But fellow believers, I hope that this pandemic open your eyes and see your distinction from the rest this is the time we see who belongs to god and who belongs to this world this is a time to see who finds hope in god and those who put their hope in mortals yes 
God may have allowed some of the things we worked so hard to get are gone due to this pandemic. But who knows? The God as a vine dresser is using this global pandemic as a season of pruning us because He wants us to be more fruitful in the next season. God is preparing us for a greater harvest in the season to come. We have a hope that though it appears everything you built has been taken from you, the Lord has tragically left a remnant that will give rise to more fruit next season. That is why I believe based from my own personal experience that if you have a hope in God, there is no hopelessness or a hopeless case when you come to the end of the road. And it is a devil's lie to say that you have nothing left. The devil is not in control. God is. The devil takes. God gives. Take the case of Job. He lost everything he worked for. All his properties, even, even his own children, in just one day, in just one day, Job lost everything. It appears that he lost everything but his hope. And this hope in God is like a remnant that brought him back to his feet. And after the pruning season, God restored everything more than what he lost. Job became more fruitful in the new season of his life. I believe that when this global pandemic is over, a new season of productivity, a new season of recovery, a new season of restoration will come. A season of fruitfulness. God will restore what the coronavirus devoured. But we need to understand that the pruning is not punishment, but for healing. Only God can dare cut us and has the power to heal us and bless us with much fruit in the next season. It is guaranteed that in the pruning process there will be loss. But understand, you are, the, you are only being pruned, but not uprooted. And don't lose sight of the promise that lies within its purpose. We read in John chapter 5, verse 2, Every bronze in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every bronze that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Hallelujah. This is, you know, the promise that is that, is, that lies beneath the purpose uh, that is for brought, uh, fruit bearing. Let us hope, church, that after this season of pruning, you will experience the fulfillment of the promise of fruit bearing in every area of your life. Therefore, there is still hope <clears throat> even during this global pandemic. And that hope is found in God alone. My hope is strong enough when you need it the most. Let us hope for the best out of this global pandemic. And the best will come because God only wants the best for us. Peace, tranquility, and order will return again. Hope can bring us joy and peace in the midst of turmoil. Hope can give us courage, strength, and boldness instead of fear. Hope can provide endurance and patience instead of tempting us to quit. Hope can offer confidence in the face of doubt. Hope is important because it can make the present moment less difficult to bear. If we believe that tomorrow will be better, we can bear a hardship today. As recorded in the book of Job, 11, 18 to 19, and let's read it again. Having hope will give you courage. You will be protected. You will rest in safety. You will lie down unafraid, and many will look to you for help. Billy Graham once said, God's mercy and grace will give me hope for myself and for our world. Hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness. According to Desmond Tutu. Hallelujah. So tonight, church, let us pray for this kind of hope during this global pandemic. 
this hope begins in you and for our world. Where can we find hope in times like this? We can find hope in God. And our hope is strengthened. And our hope can sustain us through this pandemic. Our hope that is supported by the truth of who God is. God is our stronghold. God is our strong tower. God is our promise keeper. And His attributes, hallelujah, that God is omnipotent. God is omniscient. God, God is you know, oh, 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 everywhere. He is, he, he is everywhere. He is there for us. This attribute church supports our hope, making it strong so that it will carry us through this stormy weather. Let's put our hope in God. Don't let your hope be crippled because your hope is founded upon the one, our God, the sovereign God who is in control of everything. So tonight, church, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, let's put our hope in God, in God alone. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God, we come before your presence tonight with hope in our hearts, knowing the God that you are our stronghold, knowing God that you are our strong tower, knowing God that you are our God who is a promise keeper, knowing God of your attributes, that you're omnipotent, you're everywhere, you're all powerful, you're all knowing God gives our hope strength to carry us through even lord in this darkest moment so lord we lift up to you our needs once again still lord we continue to pray that you will overcome that you will by your grace of god sustain your people through this pandemic in the mighty name of jesus and i pray god that tonight oh god you will instill the hearts of your people lord that blessed hope Lord, the hope that comes from you. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, there's so much need and there seems to be so much uncertainties going on around us, oh God. But Lord, one thing is certain. You are our sovereign God who allowed these things to happen for a reason, dear Lord. And God, I pray, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, that Lord, as we go through these hard times, oh Lord, Lord God, your grace is more than enough to see us through. Lord God, thank you so much that wherever we are, oh Lord, you will always be there for you, for, for us, oh God. So tonight, Lord, <clears throat> as we again, Lord, dwell in your presence, let the peace that passes understanding guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, oh Lord. Thank you, God, that tonight, Father God, we declare victory again. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we, you will, Lord, bring us to victory that you promised, oh God. So, Lord, I thank you so much for this opportunity that, <clears throat> Lord, together we can be one in the Spirit, seeking your grace praying in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus Christ, that you will allow this situation, Lord, for us to reflect what really matters in life. For us, Lord, to consider our spirituality. And thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit, who is ministering right now, working in our lives, oh God, will bring comfort and strength upon us. So thank you, God. I pray for each one of us right now watching this live stream, this online Bible study, Lord, that you will bless them more abundantly, that, Lord, you will sustain them through in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, receive the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So once again, I give my appreciation to you for taking time to listen you know and study with me the word of the lord and uh, looking forward again for this coming sunday that we will be worshiping god in spirit and truth 
So church and everyone listening and watching this online Bible study, God bless you, God bless you, and be safe. Amen.